Good morning, third graders. Today we are on page 251, page 251 of your student journal. And our objective today is, today I will solve equations by finding the unknown. So today I will solve equations by finding the unknown. Okay, let's look at our, no our vocabulary today. So it reminds us about our division vocabulary. Our dividend is what we're going to divide. And then we have a divisor and we have a quotient. The divisor and the quotient, some t this could tell us how many groups there are, or it could tell us how many there are in each group. And then the quotient would tell us the other. So these two tell us the number of groups and the number in the groups. So here I have 12, and it's been di divided into four groups, and there's three in each group. But what I want you to note, friends, is it also could tell me that I had 12 and I put four in each group. So it, I could see this differently because I could say I have 12 and I went one, two, three, four in a group, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So when you look at division, this could say how many groups there are, here's there's four, or it could say how many are in each group, okay? And then they remind us of an array, and they remind us of the inverse operation. We're gonna use this a lot today. The inverse operation is, I, and well, let's do an example of one. So what if we had, if we have 10, and we divide it into two groups, we're gonna have five in each group. But I also can, the inverse operation is five times two equals 10. Those are part of that fact family, okay? What are the other numbers of that fact family? What's our other division one? Could we also say 10 divided by five equals two? And then here we could say two times five equals 10. Those are all part of our fact family. And the multiplication and division are inverse operations. You're gonna see Ms. Munoz use those inverse operations to help me today. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on mine, and today we're just gonna be using all these strategies to solve our problems. So here's my first problem. My first problem says 32 divided by four equals question mark. Hmm, so they just need me to solve this. What could I use to solve this? Well, I'm gonna say, if I have 32, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna make, put four, Oh, I'm using my wrong color, friends. Four in each group. How many group? So I'm gonna have 32 and I'm gonna put four in each group. So ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Oh, I stopped at 32. So if I had 32 and I put four in each group, how many groups was I able to make? I was able to make eight equal groups. So my unknown would be eight. So that's the strategy I chose to use for that one. Okay. Let's look at my next problem. My next problem says question mark or unknown equals, or unknown divided by six equals eight. Hmm. So I have something and I'm gonna divide it by six and then I'm gonna have eight. So I could do a few different strategies for this. I might though, I might do, I could say that this is, I don't know how many, but I divided it into six in each group, and I have eight equal groups. So how many would it take to do that? If I had eight equal groups, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
and I put six in each group, one, two, three, four, five, six, let's put six in each group, how many would it have taken to do that? What does my dividend have to be that I could put six in each group and have eight equal groups? What had to be my dividend? Let's go back and count that. If I have six here, I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. I would have needed 48 to divide and put six in each group and have eight equal groups. So my unknown had to be 48. Okay, let's do some of these together. Let's look at our first one. Our first one says, we have 63 and we're going to divide it. We don't know, and then our answer is nine. So sometimes, friends, I, I like to write it a little different. I like to put my equal sign at the end. So I might rewrite it like this. That just makes it easier for my brain. So I'm just gonna put the equal sign at the end. I'm gonna rewrite my equation. So I have 63 and I divided it, and I have nine. So let's say we have 63. We don't know how many are in each group. We don't know that. That's our unknown. How many are in each group? We don't know. But I know I have nine equal groups. I know I have nine, so let's make our nine equal groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I know I have nine equal groups. I just don't know how many are going to go in each one. So let's divide our 63, let's pass them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I almost forgot that one, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, Deep breath, huh, that's a lot of work. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Deep breath, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Okay, we divided our 63. How many were we able to put in each of our groups? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we put seven in each of our groups, which that means our unknown was seven. Okay, so let's look at this next one. I might do this next one a little different. We haven't used our inverse operation. If we have question mark divided by nine equals nine, can I use my inverse operation and say nine times nine must equal question mark? That's the inverse operation. Hmm, well nine times nine means I have nine rows of nine. That's what that means, nine rows of nine. Nine rows of nine. So let's see what nine rows of nine are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Deep breath. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Okay, how many rows do we have so far? We have five rows. We still have four more rows to go. Okay, and we stopped at 45, friends. So let's keep going. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, and that was seven rows. We have two more rows, and that was, we stopped at 63. So 
64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, friends, 81. Here's the neat thing. Some of you might know what nine times nine is because you do your reflex math. The nice thing is, is if we learn those facts, especially doing our reflex, then we wouldn't have to do all this work. But nine times nine is 81. So when you solve these together you're, with your teacher and by yourself, you're gonna probably use some different strategies. So you have to find a strategy that works well for you. So I like writing the groups and the rows that helps me but it would be also nice if you knew your facts from reflex. It would have saved us a lot of drawing time. All right, boys and girls, have a good day. Bye-bye.